Good afternoon, everyone. As I said on Saturday, I'm humbled by the trust and confidence the American people have placed in me and in Vice President-elect Harris. And we're ready to get to work addressing the needs of the American people. Today, that work begins. It starts with doing everything possible to get the COVID-19 under control so that we can reopen our businesses safely and sustainably, resume our lives, put, our, put this pandemic behind us. And we just received positive news in this fight with the announcement that there's been progress made toward a successful vaccine. Soon, as the expectation is, the FDA will run a process of rigorous reviews and approvals. And the process must also be grounded in science and fully transparent so the American people can have every confidence that any approved vaccine is safe and effective. At the same time, it's clear that this vaccine, even if approved, will not be widely available for many months yet to come. The challenge before us right now is still immense and growing. And although we are not in office yet, I'm just laying out what we expect to do and hope can be done, some of it, between now and the time we are sworn in. But so uh, the purpose of this is to let you know what we're going to do once sworn in. And so uh, there's a need for bold action to fight this pandemic. We're still facing a very dark winter. There are now nearly 10 million COVID cases in the United States. Last week, we topped 120,000 new cases on multiple successive days. Infection rates are going up, hospitalizations are going up, deaths are going up. This crisis claimed nearly 1,000 American lives a day, and nearly 240,000 deaths so far. The projections still indicate we could lose 200,000 more lives in the coming months before a vaccine can be made widely available. So we can't forego the important work that needs to be done between now and then to get our country through the worst wave yet in this pandemic, to reduce the spread, to save lives. So that's why today I've named the COVID-19 Transition Advisory Board, comprised of distinguished public health experts to help our transition team translate the Biden-Harris COVID-19 plan into action a blueprint that we can put in place as soon as Kamala and I are sworn in to office on January 20th, 2021. And we'll seek to add other members to this board during this important, with, to bring additional important perspectives on public health and expertise throughout the transition. This group will advise on detailed plans built on a bedrock of science and to keep compassion, empathy, and care for every American at its core, making rapid testing widely available, more widely available, much more widely available, and building a core of contact tracers who will track and curb this disease while we prioritize getting vaccines first to the most at-risk populations, developing clear and detailed guidance, and providing the necessary resources for small businesses, schools, child care centers, to reopen and operate safely and effectively during the pandemic, protecting both workers and the public, scaling up productive life-saving treatments and therapeutics, and when it's ready, making sure an approved vaccine is distributed equitably and efficiently and free for every American. If cases rising once more, it's imperative that we ramp up our production of personal protective equipment to make sure our brave healthcare workers have what they need to do battle safely against this virus. We're going to get states, cities, and tribes the tests and the supplies they need. We're going to protect vulnerable populations who are at risk, most at risk in this virus, older Americans and those with pre-existing conditions. We're going to address the health and economic disparities that mean this virus is hitting the Black, Latino, Asian American, Pacific Islanders, Native American communities harder than white communities. Focusing on these com communities is one of our priorities, not an afterthought. The bottom line, I will spare no effort to turn this pandemic around once we're sworn in on January 20th, to get our kids back to school safely, our businesses growing, and our economy running at full speed again and to get an approved vaccine manufactured and distributed as quickly as possible 
to as many, Ameri as, to as many Americans as possible free of charge. We'll follow the science. We'll follow the science. Let me say that again. And we'll adjust to new data when it comes in. And we'll listen and work in cooperation with governors and local leaders of both parties who are fighting this virus in their communities this very day. There is so much good work happening at state and local levels across the country. Governors, mayors, they're stepping up. The advisory board will listen and learn lessons from their experience. And because we know that we won't fully defeat COVID-19 until we defeat it everywhere, my advisory council also includes experts on global health security so that we can restore U.S. global leadership to fight this pandemic. This is a crisis that affects everyone. As I've said throughout this campaign, I will be a president for every American. This election is over. It's time to put aside the partisanship and the rhetoric that designed to demonize one another. It's time to end the politicization of basic responsible public health steps like mask wearing and social distancing. We have to come together to heal the soul of this country so that we can effectively address this crisis as one country where hardworking Americans have each other's backs and we're united in our shared goal, defeating this virus. As we work toward a safe and effective vaccine, we know the single most effective thing we can do to stop the spread of COVID is wear a mask. The head of the CDC warned this fall that for the foreseeable future, a mask remains the most potent weapon against the virus. Today's news does not change that urgent reality. We, I won't be president until January 20th, but my message today is to everyone is this. It doesn't matter who you voted for, whether you stood, who, where you stood before Election Day. It doesn't matter your party, your point of view. We can save tens of thousands of lives if everyone would just wear a mask for the next few months. Not Democrat or Republican lives, American lives. You know, maybe it would save the life of a person who uh, stocks a shelf at your local grocery store. Maybe it saves the life of a member of your place of worship. Maybe it saves the lives of one of your children's teachers. Maybe it saves your life. So please, I implore you, wear a mask. Do it for yourself. Do it for your neighbor. A mask is not a political statement. But it is a good way to start pulling the country together. I want to be very clear. The goal of mask wearing is not to make your life less comfortable. It's to take something or take something away from you. It's to give something back to all of us, a normal life. The goal is to get back to normal as fast as possible. And masks are critical in doing that. It won't be forever. But that's how we'll get our nation back, back up to speed economically, so we can go back to celebrating birthdays and holidays together, so we can attend sporting events together, so we can get back to the lives and connections we shared before the pandemic. It doesn't matter whether or not we always agree with one another. It doesn't matter who you voted for. We are Americans, and our country is under threat. And now, we're now called to do the same thing that generations of proud Americans have done when faced with a crisis throughout our history. Rise above our differences to defend the strength and the vitality of our nation. You know, that's the character of patriots. That's the character of Americans. We have to do this together.